Tuesday night, we have a special mystery tournament edition of Don't Make Us Bored. We will be having some GMs racing each other in video games uh, during that time. That will be a lot of fun. And the best thing is that they don't know what games are going to happen, and neither do I. Sign-ups, by the way, are open for Mystery Tournament if you would like to participate this year. Please do so, and feel free, Chad, if you do have a link to the sign-ups, feel free to share that. Mystery Tournament is basically our cousin tournament, and we love them. They are awesome. Okay? Uh, also... What am I thinking? Sign-ups for GDQ are currently open as well if you want to submit a run, especially if you played in Big Bad Gameathon or any of the other tournaments or had a run at Don't Make Us Bored and want to go ahead and use that as a submission video, please do! We have all of these side events uh, partly to help you show what you're made of, so please do share if you would like. Now, everybody, we are moving on to the last game! for today, for Cuso Grande. We will, of course, have more games later next weekend, and uh, I am wanting to do more streams during the week, so hopefully we can have some, but less about me, more about you, and what you want to know is who the GM is for the next game, so please welcome on in the final GM for the weekend, Tristan! Our egg, our beautiful egg. Hello, Tristan. Oh, hello. I'm glad that your egg self is here. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> my egg Sona. <laughs> your egg Sona, yeah, right there. Very hairy for an egg, but you know, I'm not gonna question it. It, uh, it, I've been around a while. I've probably gone bad at some point. Look, I'm sorry that it's poorly cropped. Uh, can I? That's alright. This cropping is gonna be a theme for this match. Oh no! Uh, why do you say that? Because the game takes up about forty percent of the screen, and I think uh, between game overs it moves. <sighs> Tristan, I <laughs> literally cropped out the blue. We'll see if it works. Is that bad? Um, we'll, we'll see if anything moves. Don't don't sweat it too much yet, but it, it something may move. <laughs> okay. So uh, the worst thing about this is how I'm going to have to deal with it. Thanks, Trisden. What game do we have today? <laughs> uh, we, we have what I think may be the first Vic 20 game in Cusa Grande. I'm not entirely sure on that, but uh We've got uh, Chuck Norris Super Kicks for the Vic 20. Sweet! Now we have had Su Chuck Norris Super Kicks, but not for the Vic 20. Yeah, it, it's I, kind I realized, of exciting. Uh, oh my I realized gosh. about three minutes before go time that the the 2600 version was in round one. I think this one's a little worse. I can believe it, and honestly, you know, the funny thing is that uh, the original game for this wasn't Chuck Norris themed. I guess Chuck Norris maybe saw this and was like, hey, my game now. The my story game. is I heard is it was the other way around, that it was originally a Chuck Norris game and then the licensing expired and they retrofitted it to just be a generic Kung Fu game. Oh, but that, that might just be, be the case. Vic 20 story. Honestly, uh, considering this game, it's not really so notable as to, like... There's nothing specifically Chuck Norris about the game at all when you're in the game. <laughs> Not really, no. But yeah, the, the main thing about it is um, when you are setting up the game, uh, before you press the button to start playing, if you tap the D-pad or move the joystick or whatever the heck it is, the game view on the screen moves. And I presume that was a thing that they did to let you deal with, like, weird overscan on CRTs. Yeah. But, um, uh, someone may move the game view and you may have to recrop it. I'm sorry. Okay, I... Whatever. I'll deal with it. <laughs> and if it comes down to it, I'll just go ahead and capture the whole screen uh, and all the blue and just... Tristan, and just deal. I yeah. wanted to have a relaxing day. I wanted to kick back. You have me as the oh GM. You know that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I know. Is there gonna be flashing in this game? I mean, it's a Tristan no. game. 
there's there's a couple of like slow color transitions in the game over screen, but it's like one a second. It doesn't flash. Gotcha. Well, I'm currently waiting for one of our players to go live. Their stream's still not up as far as I can tell. Uh, and you right. May, if possible, you may also need to provide background music. Uh, yeah, if we start falling asleep, sure, okay. whatever, I'll put that work in as well. Thank you, Tristan. <laughs> what? <laughs> Seriously, glad I'm help. glad that you're here, though. I love having you. It's always a blast. I, you know, this one's going to be a little bit down tempo, but I've got some, I've got some reading material for us if we need it. Perfect. Um, Is it a Chuck Norris fanfic? You know, that would have been a really good idea, uh, but no, uh, well, so, if we get really bored, we can go ahead and look that up. Yeah. Because I'm sure so, uh, there are Chuck Norris fanfics out there. Oh, there's there have Chuck to be. I'm grabbing some chips as well. I'm sorry if you hear crinkling bag. I'm trying to keep it away from the microphone as much as possible. But as far as the reading material goes, um, this is going to be a little bit of a diversion, but hang with me on this. I played World of Warcraft back in like the vanilla days and Burning Crusade, the, the really old content. Yeah. And if you level Horde in the original world of Warcraft, there's an area that everyone has to go through no matter what faction they're in. So you have all these like level 20 players shoved together in one area with a, an, a regional chat on. And it's like 15 levels of grinding. Everyone's just kind of bored there. There's nothing. And stuff starts to happen. Uh -oh. um, and, and one of the traditions was people passing around Chuck Norris facts. The Baron's chat is what they're referring to. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, the Baron's chat. <laughs> okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, I if you want to know where Man Creek's like wife that. is, play, uh, play the current expansion of WoW. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haven't touched WoW in so long, though. Me either. Um, I tried to get back into it a little bit ago, and it's just been so homogenized. Like, <laughs> is it like milk? Yeah, like, it's aged like milk. No, just like everyone's kit is exactly the same, just you get different visual effects when you push the buttons, and it's just, eh, whatever. Well, everybody, this is the game. All right, so um, we'll see how long the, the cropping lasts. I have warned people that if they move the joystick during the game over screen, that it'll move. But I've also told them, since they're the ones racing, uh, that if they screw it up, just don't worry about it. We'll fix it. Uh, or rather, you'll fix it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. This is going to be a lot of fun. Actually, yes. no, I, I'm, I love when weird things like this happen. Okay. Our players are all ready, so everybody get all of your action emotes, muscles, kung fu emotes. Uh, is there anything else? Roundhouse kicks. We Roundhouse got kicks. Okay, I'm doing the countdown. Yeah, abs. <laughs> oh, boy. I This is going to be a lot of fun. I, I love this game. It is something special. As soon as I see movement, I will start our timer. And we are off. One thing to cover right quick, we are doing a score attack. So chat, if you see someone game over, and it's obvious when they do because the screen turns all kinds of weird colors, feel free to like call out their score when you see it because I am an idiot and I will miss stuff. And you know, we have our refs, of course, but. Oh yeah. Well, these are good sounds. Boop, 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 yeah. boop. Oh, good job, Chuck. He did it. Oh, don't touch the wall, Chuck. Boop, boop. Yeah, we're going to put music on real uh -huh. quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me get my Vim instance open here so I can start writing down scores and okay it's going to be a score attack then whoever gets the it highest is going score, to be a score takes attack. the victory uh, okay it's a little little disingenuous because score is basically a one-to-one -one mirror of progress but i chose score attack for a reason that we'll get into if we get that far okay 
Now, um, one interesting thing about this game that uh, might not be apparent is that there are various enemies. They don't all just run the same way or anything. Uh, and so you have to learn the various ways to actually destroy the enemies that show up. Right. So in other versions of the game, the enemies are wearing different outfits and you can learn, well, this enemy is wearing this outfit, so he's going to move this way and yep. be vulnerable to this uh this is the vic 20 you don't get that what you get is um you get random enemies on the screen anywhere from one to three uh exactly one of them is vulnerable to any kind of attack the others will just ignore your attack um in later rounds anyway uh in earlier rounds maybe they're all vulnerable but uh they will only be vulnerable to one kind of attack so the ones on Fizz's screen right now are vulnerable to kicks. Okay, uh, it's based off of their color, right? The enemy never, color, or is it? I don't believe it's based on color, um, but you will run into situations where you try to punch something and hey, that enemy wasn't vulnerable to punch. You had no way to tell from looking at it, but... Yeah, I, I'm yeah. glad that you don't instantly die by touching the enemies because this would be a, a very short game. Instead, yeah. it's just their ninja stars that are going you know, to kill you. So the game is lo-fi enough that my head cannon for it is the enemies fight you kung fu style um, and knock you down. And eventually they just remember they have a gun and they pull it out and shoot you. Because <laughs> it looks it. like a bullet. <laughs> I love it. It's true. It's like uh, Indiana Jones. He's just like, I don't have to deal with this. I have a gun. Well, yeah. Thank goodness for Indiana Jones knowing how to fight. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, this is a game developed by Xanox. It, it looks like Xerox, but it's not. Uh, they made other games like Slurpee, Tomark the Barbarian, a Robin Hood, a Sir Lancelot. Yeah. Yeah. So Xonix's claim to fame was they sold cartridges that they called double enders, which were literally just two parts duct taped back to back to each other. Um, <laughs> and they broached it as a two for one kind of deal, you know? Yep. Uh, but usually one of the two games was just like nothing. It was just incredibly- You mean artillery duel? Yeah, it, yeah. incredibly low effort. Like this is part of a double ender cart. The other side of the cart is um, Artillery Duel, which is just a really crappy rip off of Scorched Earth. Yeah, it looks pretty dang uh, generic. Although looking at this game, it also looks pretty dang generic, but <laughs> I, I think that's just because we're dealing with some VIC-20 limitations here, <laughs> you know? Yeah, Not I mean, the VIC-20 can do better than this. Yeah. But we'll just put that still. out there right now, but... <laughs> still. Yeah, uh, this eventually did get re-released as Kung Fu Super Kick, so you were correct that it was Chuck Norris first. When the license ran out, they just switched over to Kung Fu Super Kicks. Uh, another thing worthy of note that we just saw from Zimmy's screen. Um, you have a timer. You don't have a health bar. It's just if you take a hit in melee, you get stunned for a moment. If you get shot, you go back a ways and have to um, retread your progress. But um, if you go off of the beaten path into the grass, your time just disappears. It's gone. Okay. So don't go into the grass. I mean, that that's pretty good advice, I would say. It I is. can't imagine more than one or two people worked on this game, by the way. Like, seriously, this is not a fancy game. I'm okay. getting a little concerned at what happened on... Oh, uh, you just saw Mary's screen there? Ah. The, the game seems to be gone? <laughs> there we go. Maybe. Yeah, Chuck Norris may be all-powerful, but he still respects issues. off the grass signs. Okay, let me fix this. Let me fix this, everybody. I'll get it. <laughs> Thank you, Tristan. I'm sorry. No, I... you're not. 
No, okay. I'm not. I, I am a little bit, because I don't like making you do extra stuff. But when this came up, it's like, do we make you handle it, or do we make the racers handle it while the timer is running, you know? Make me handle it. It's fine. Yeah, that was my take on it. Uh, okay. This is going to be some of the ugliest cropping in all of Cusa Grande history, so everybody just bear with me. Or That was my goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? It's going to work. <laughs> there. Guess what? We've we've got those two games on screen, and if it moves again, then the cropping will change again. Yeah, just just zoom out. <laughs> it's fine. So the we've the got, longer this um, goes, the more zoomed out I'm gonna get. Trust me. Exactly. Fizz is doing shockingly well for just a first attempt into this, which is probably going to dovetail into the other problem with this game is it's disgustingly short. Yeah. But the game actually goes on forever uh, once you reach the final area. Uh, yes, and that's why we're doing a score attack. Um, it is a game with normal progress and normal checkpoints and everything. But when you reach the final boss, the final boss is unkillable and you just get more and more score hitting it. Always good. Always good to have a never-ending game, you know? Or at the very least, I hacked the game to give myself 20 minutes and I spent the entire 20 minutes punching the boss and it didn't die. Okay. Oh my gosh. I love that there's a magazine that says that they reviewed this game. No, Fizz! <laughs> they reviewed well, it. They don't actually say what the score was, but they say they reviewed this game, so that's cool. So confirmed, this game was reviewed. So Fizz was walking into... This is the boss fight, by the way. We are eight minutes in, and we have someone at the boss. <laughs> um, and then they walked into the grass and took a bunch of time damage, and here we are. So there's a game over at like 172,000, and Fizz moves the screen. Uh <laughs> to be expected, but hey, it looks like it's mostly back to where it was before. I can yeah. live with that. You know what? Whatever. I'm going to try to make it look decent again. Everybody, hold on to your buns. <laughs> yeah, grab your butts, everybody. Okay, that's what Kusa Grande is all about, butts. On the plus side, unless someone walks into the grass, we have a fairly stable bead on when they're going to game over because you restore time, you get a minute back at each checkpoint, and that's it. Everything else is... Uh, time degrades linearly. There is no way to get extra time penalties unless you end up in the grass. Um, yeah, that's fair you enough. You have to increase your time. By the way, uh, for people who are wondering why you can move the screen around, uh, oh, CRTs were kind of dumb in that uh, essentially you would get burn in if you let images stay for too long. Uh, and essentially your monitors could get permanently damaged, your TVs could get permanently damaged. So multiple consoles and video game systems uh, and computers had different ways to deal with it. Atari, for example, oftentimes whenever you died, the color palette would swap. And that ended up helping out quite a bit uh, in keeping burnout from happening. Uh, for this, I guess they decided VIC-20, this game specifically, uh, it would move the game after getting a game over, which I think is a decent-ish way to handle it, but odd that they gave you, the player, the power to do that. It was really inconsiderate of them to not think about streamers in 2021 doing um, a restreaming, though. I know, right? <laughs> Those jerks. <laughs> It looks like we're going to have about 33,000 as a watermark for Zimmy. Okay. Uh, Zimmy's done to about five seconds at 32,800. There we go. Yay. So Fizz has a colossal lead. To be perfectly honest, I'm not 100% sure how Fizz got as much score as they did. It looks like if you, um, if you're way ahead of the trend, you can get quite a bit of score. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm just taking a look at some of these. 
reviews here. Uh, I'm actually not finding a review for this game in the source that some website was using. I don't know. But there were there were reviews for Dragon's Lair, for uh, an Indiana Jones game, for War Games, Serpent Star, uh, uh, Load Runner, which is a classic. Oh my gosh. Like that, th there were a lot of games made back when this came out in 1984. Uh, a, a lot of classics for the older systems before the Nintendo stepped in and started basically dominating. Even though, you know, the. Even, you know, th this was sort of during the video game slump, but there were still a lot of decent games. E. Salamiri. Make my life a nightmare, thank you. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Welcome to Cusa Grande, everybody. <laughs> Stop laughing at me! Got it! There. There, y'all happy? That's m maybe right, that's pretty close, okay. Sure. I'll no! Uh, I literally <laughs> just finished moving it and then you move. Oh my gosh. Okay. Everybody, we're, we're going to do this. We're doing this live. We're going to do this. There. Ish. Oh, this is everything I'd ever hoped for. Well. You uh, need to hope for better things in life. Yeah. Like forgiveness. <laughs> I'm beyond that. Yeah. In many ways. At this moment, you are. <laughs> there. Beautiful and happy, everybody. You better be happy or I'll come punch you in the face. <laughs> Wop. The face punches will continue until morale improves. Yeah. Something like that. So another thing about this game is, um, you know, you have these forking paths, and the way the game works is you get into an encounter at a certain vertical, like, progression level up the screen, no matter which fork you take. The difference is only one fork won't just have a tree branch appear in, in front of you, and apparently Chuck Norris just can't step over a tree branch. Okay. I don't know why. Well, it's hard. It's like he's Chuck Norris. Just roundhouse kick it. I don't, well, it depends on how big the branch is. Like, wood is really hard when it's not in plank form. You know, breaking a tree, you do. there's a reason you do not see people going and karate chopping trees. It just doesn't work. Well, that and I typically like trees and don't want to go karate chopping them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you can break a plank, but guess what? That plank is a small part of a tree, okay? It is not the complete tree. You go against a complete tree. It's like the difference between stabbing a toe, uh, just a giant's toe where the toe was already cut off from the giant, and stabbing a giant's toe when the entire giant is attached, okay? Giant's gonna smush ya. Dan's gonna step on you. You're dead. So pay attention. Is the plank still attached to the tree? Because if so, don't chop it. There you go. That's karate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel educated. Uh, I didn't know that uh, Utah had its own brand of karate. Called using your brain, okay? Honestly, that is the most important type of karate, the brain karate. Because if you can karate chop people with your mind, you don't even have to stand up. It's true. But no, the, the real thing is know your enemy, okay? And if you're making your enemy a tree, then don't chop it with your hand, okay? At least bring an axe or something. That is, is, that's the tree's weakness, axe. 
Zimmy is making pretty good progress on a new score PB, uh, and then gets shot in the big toe and dies. Uh, and bright. Uh, this goes down at just over a hundred thousand. That's not a PB no, for him. No, this no. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say, I did not at any point tell the racers to move stuff around on purpose, even though I thought about doing it. Uh, if anything, I asked him to be a little considerate about moving stuff around on accident, but it, it happens. I love that the fizz resets every time anything moves, because he's like, I gotta be nice to our restreamer. See, Tristan, you could've been like the fizz. You could've been nice. But no, what are you? You're an egg. I wanted the race to be fair, so it didn't come down to if you accidentally move the screen, you get penalized, you know? <laughs> I love it. It keeps me doing something other than eating chips and watching the stream, you know? Oh, what kind of chips? A sea salt and vinegar, baby. Purely a D-tier chip. What are you talking about? They're the best. Okay. <laughs> Look, let me get my tier list here and we'll we'll go over it, but Yeah, I'll go ahead and give you my opinions about your chip list. Uh no seriously, like <sighs> salt and vinegar it makes my face scrunch up and it's so good. The best is the malt vinegar though, okay? When you have chips with malt vinegar instead of regular vinegar, it's divine. I am a barbecue type of person. Too sweet. I'll eat them, but too sweet. Zimmy uh, puts down a new PB of uh, 66,300, excuse mm -hmm. me. Very nice. And I forgot to mention, Chibi Shala, thank you so much for the resubscription during the first part of this match it is a huge help. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so Fizz has gotten 172,000 points, Zimmy 66,000, Ven 68,000, and E Salamiri 38,000. There's a huge spread, but remember, the only attempt that matters is their best attempt. Yes, and Fizz did get to the boss, which no one else has done yet. So uh, I'm expecting a little bit more tighter competition as we get a little bit further in. Now, the thing is, the players actually need to come in first for this match. Uh, I see the Fizz has 21 points, for example. Getting second place would be seven points, boosting him up to 28 points. And that's not enough to make it into the bracket. We're having a lot of eliminations from this game. Zimmy, oh, for example, is at 20 points. Again, taken first, you're in the bracket. Ben Bright at 20 points, and E. Salamiri. Uh, unfortunately, they use a different name on the Google Doc, so I don't know. Piper! Yeah, Piper is at 19 points, so taking first would get Piper into the uh, tiebreaker if we have the tiebreaker so that's what it's looking like so far everybody there is a huge decent uh spread of points for people who are playing right now but they have to come in first for this match for a chance to stay in Cuso grande the fizz got lucky with that tree branch and was able to just go around it Sometimes you can, and sometimes it may be worth it to go into the grass, depending on the situation. Uh, Zimmy Cakes was doing that earlier. Just a tree branch, and you have to go a pixel into the grass to get around it? Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, meanwhile, Yusala Mary got a small PB by about 500 points. Uh, still rather firmly in fourth, but there's 40 minutes to go, so I'm not putting a lot of stock into that at the moment. Oh my gosh, people um, mention ghost pepper chips. Ghost pepper isn't as bad as... Like people made it made it out to be, like you know, it, it's pretty do. bad, but it's pretty hot. What should you I should do? You should do the one chip challenge. What's that challenge? Uh, there is a company that makes tortilla chips that are just Carolina Reaper smashed into a potato chip for a tortilla chip form, and they sell them in a box with a foil wrapper, and it's just one large tortilla chip. 
and they do it as a thing where it's like, um, you should eat this on camera and uh, record your reaction. Okay. But, you know, it's a tortilla chip. It's a couple million Scoville. It's fine. <sighs> Maybe, <laughs> I think I would have to be bribed to do that, but I would do it for a bribe. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I'm definitely not the strongest when it comes to spice, and that would probably destroy me. How much of a bribe? We'll talk. We'll talk about it. I don't want to make any... Uh, you know, I, I've had a goal of getting 400 sub points at some point. Sure, whatever. If we ever hit that goal and get a new emote, I'll throw in the one chip as well. And you know what? Maybe I'll only take... I do not promise I'll eat the whole chip either. I promise I will try. And as soon as I cry, then we're done. <laughs> okay, that that's what I'm saying, okay? I will not... I do not promise to eat the whole chip. I make no promises about how much I could eat, but I would try. So Vinbright's at over 100,000 with a minute and a half to go. There's quite a bit of potential here. Fizz is on the boss at uh, 10,000 points below his high water mark. I don't think a lot's going to come from that. Um, but the person to watch at the moment is Vinbright to see what he does with, uh, with this attempt. And apparently what he does with this attempt is get shot in the shin. Mm. Pew pew! Shooting me in the shin. That is rough. Ah. Oh. Thorn, you're asking how many sub points we currently have? 199? So, <laughs> I'm pretty comfortable right now in not having to do that for a while, Tristan. You know, I, I would definitely uh, recommend researching both the thing's availability and um, how rough it's going to be before making that promise, but uh, you sound pretty comfortably out of range of it for the moment, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I like making dumb promises because guess what, you know, that would be a small amount... <sighs> a lot of suffering for a small amount of time. That seems up my alley. And then a four-hour wait, and then a lot more suffering. I can deal with that. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, Vinbright uh, hammers in a 119,000-point uh, PB, putting him in second pretty comfortably. Very uh, nice, very nice. This has 25 seconds left to make about 4,500 points. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, considering that these enemies disappear and reappear, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, these these are bad. <laughs> now, imagine me fighting this for 20 minutes with the timer hacked to see if there is any way to kill them. That was uh, not not fun. That's pretty great. So, yeah, 170,100. That is not a PB for Fizz, but Fizz does return and attain his uh, first place rank. Very nice. Yeah. Everybody with Cusa Grande, it doesn't matter if you, uh, oh my gosh, just a second, let me fix Ben Bright. Okay, there we go. Uh, it doesn't matter if you get a game over at any given point, what we're looking for is their best attempt, okay? Yep. And right now, Ben Bright, uh, E. Salamiri and Zimmy Cakes all need to make a decent push. I think we're going to see a score over 200,000 points at some point, though. I would hope so. I would be curious to see if Fizz didn't figure out a way to double dip checkpoint scores because 170,000 is far higher than anything I got. <laughs> He's done it multiple times, so I don't think it was a fluke. Uh, I just need to watch him carefully and figure out what he's doing. So, another thing... In other versions of this game, you actually get additional moves as you progress through the grass area. Is that true with this version of the game? Do you get... You get one additional move. Okay. Um, after, I think, the third checkpoint, you get the flip kick that you've seen a couple of people use. 
And its yeah. benefit is, as long as you target an enemy that's not like a ghost and invincible, which some of them are, uh, it will it will land. There is nothing immune to it that is not just immune to everything. Yeah. Uh, and it's a good Chuck Norris move. Okay, everybody, the, the jump flip. It's impossible to hit with it. <laughs> What's impossible to hit? The flipping kick is just a pain in the butt to land on anything. Oh, because you just, yeah, that's fair. You have this big flourish to it. You just got to line yourself up, Trisden. You yeah, got to I mean, you gotta know, know your enemy. See you? If you use the kick flip against a tree, the tree's not going to move. Very easy to land. Mm. I see Good you there. Know. Yeah, do not do a re regular karate chop. The kick flip. That's I'm trying to, what you need. I've tried to flip off of a tree and I just missed before when I was a kid. That wasn't fun. <laughs> well, I, I would go ahead and say that that might be a lack of training there. You know, practice. Yeah. Practice makes perfect. You want to get good at kick fl flipping off of trees, then you got to practice. What is the sitting about? Every time an enemy walks into you, you get stunned for a moment. Um, that's only a momentary, like, loss of control. You actually die by getting shot, which, yeah. It can, however, be incredibly frustrating to just have someone walking over you over and over again, stunning you. 76-400 for Yasalamiri. That's a PB for them. That moves them into third. And so Yasalamiri managed to continue without moving the screen for me. That's a million Brosentia points. Which are worth uh, nothing. How much are those worth in the actual race? Nothing. Okay. So the fact that I'm at like negative a billion for this doesn't matter. Good. Well, like the negative ones are worth something. Can I trade them on the blockchain? Nah. You, you can just trade them on the block, just standing out on the sidewalk being like, hey! Hey, got a bunch of points here. Gotta get rid of them. Are negative percentage points non-fungible? <laughs> uh, no, they're very fungible. You can fung them all up. Fung in here, fung in there, percentage coins are everywhere. What is the proof of work that backs a negative percentage point? Probably farting. <laughs> So, Vinbright has a massive score for having three minutes left. I'm hoping to see some heavy progress here. They're already setting, well, they're close to setting a PB and they have two and a half minutes remaining. Yeah, the Fizz onto the quote unquote boss, if you want to call it that, with a very good score and probably going to be setting a new PB if he can Run keep from that bullet. just whopping these dudes the problem is they turn invisible and that's annoying you can still hit them while they're invisible and a strategy i found was to just hug a side of the screen and let them come to me while spamming punch but if they shoot you does anything happen at this point or you just get stunned if you get shot in this screen oh so basically it's just guess what you've got four minutes left to try to do literally anything and get a high score pretty much that's why we're score attacking aha because if we weren't technically, uh, Fizz would have won this match at eight minutes in, and we can't have that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say my currency is anything but cryptic. Okay, it is not hidden. It is very obvious. What's the opposite of crypto? Uh, let's see. Okay. Liminal. Liminal. My currency is cryptids. I just, I like weird people. Yeah, cryptids. Uh, that's trading weirdness. That's pretty good. Whoa. How did Vinbright get 170,000? We have a race for first. That is pretty cool. Yeah, Vinbright still racking up points. Uh, the Fizz 
is still in the lead technically, but Vembright could very well pass that up in just a little bit. Yeah, uh, good to see a Flannel Cat here. And yeah, Flannel Cat, I believe, is the one who gave out the Atari version of this game. This is definitely the worst version, but it is kind of dumb. Vembright has, um, upon hitting one more enemy, tied first place. There's the tie. Nope, they're in the lead now. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, never mind. It was Hedge Maze who gave it out. Sorry, Hedge Maze. I took away the credit and gave it to Flannel Cat when you deserve the credit for finding a crappy game in the first place. Actually, wait, no. Let's give credit to the people who made this game. Thank you so much, Zonox. Or they whoever made it. Who the crap made this? Whatever, you get credit for it. Good job. Zonox, yeah. So the Fizz is running a new high score too. Uh this is this is huge. Look at this. Yeah! Hundreds Oh my gosh, it's back and forth between the Fizz and Venbright. Although the Fizz will probably be able to get a higher score just due to the amount of time here. Yep. The ninja murder spree is uh, definitely very profitable. Yeah. Do, 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 All right, do, do, so Venbright goes down with 178,200. Do, do, do. And Fizz has passed that already. Do, do, do. So Vinbright slides into first for a brief moment and then falls back to second immediately. Ouch. That's all right, though. We still got 30 minutes. Plenty of time. We'll have to see how the players are able to do here. Uh, okay, I'm trying to find out a little bit more about this company. Unfortunately, there's just not a lot of information about Xanox. Other than it sounds like Xanax. <laughs> but honestly, I think it has the opposite uh, the opposite effect. Other Chuck Norris uh, things that exist out there, there's a documentary called Chuck Norris vs. Communism. Yeah, that's I right. Much like that. <laughs> How about Chuck Norris Bring on the Pain? This is a video game that came out in 2008, a beat-em-up. Yeah. It came out on iPhone and BlackBerry. It was on BlackBerry, Tristan. So we've got oh, 185,000 on um, Fizz's screen. Well, let me go ahead and fix Venbright's screen again. Yeah, this is an ongoing is theme today, infinite. by the way. <laughs> yep. Uh, the last fight, essentially, it's just fight as long as you can and get a high score. Uh, Soul Miri is stamping down a huge PB, 113,000 with three and a half minutes to go. They are already 50% over their their last high water mark. Plenty of time left to make more. So this company that made this game was actually located in Minnesota. Uh they had a lot of the two-sided cartridges. Uh, and when you say two-sided, it's not that they were duct tape. It's like they tried to make one cart and actually accidentally made an abomination of a cart. It is an abomination. It's just, it's, it a, it's a shell with two boards on it. Um, yeah, it's hideous. It's a concept that didn't live very long because they realized that basically everything you do with a cartridge-based console is going to have the palm of your hand making contact with the contacts on the side you're not playing. Yeah, so let me let me see if I can idea. get a picture up for people uh, and you can see this atrocity, this thing that never should have existed. Okay. They were so occupied with if they could, they never thought about if they should, and they really shouldn't have. I mean... I actually do appreciate like companies trying to give you more content, but considering that one of the games uh, listed in it essentially doesn't count as a game, it's barely even a game. Uh, That's how all the double enders are, is you have a game that is a game and then you have just nothing. Yep. Yep, a Rooney. 
Okay, here we go. Here is the ugly beast uh, of a cart here. The Atari had these carts. Uh, you just take it out and flip it over and stick it in and there you go. You've got your other video game ready to play. Wait, Sanjian, you have two of these? Oh, baby. But yeah, it's something that was actually made, something that came out, and I'm not opposed to it. If you put two real games on it, that would be freaking awesome. I would be all about this abomination. Okay, but why did they have to do that when on the nest you could fit 52 games in one cartridge without these shenanigans? <laughs> I know, right? Oh, man. No, you can fit, like, 999 in one is what I saw. That's a <laughs> lot, Kristen. 900. That's a lot. Yeah, it's over... It's over 900. Slightly less than 1,000. Unfortunately, like, about 100 of those are just Mario 1, starting at different points in the game. I've got some... I've got some bootleg carts here. I love him. You saw Amiri's got the potential to take the lead here. One minute left in the final boss, uh, 10k to go. I think that might be doable. It is doable. Come on, uh, okay. If the invisible Ooh. murder ninjas are cooperative. Yay, invisible murder ninjas! Absolutely terrifying. You know, that's a really good way to be a ninja, though, okay? Because ninjas were all about being sneaky and not really dying, but actually causing other people to die. It works! It's a good strategy. I think my favorite ninja story is still the one of uh, an assassination that got carried out that involved a ninja hiding in the culverin of an outhouse until his target came in and then stabbing him in the butt. I mean, if it works, it works. You know, gotta it's stab. kind of a crappy way to go, but... Look, if you are getting, if you're a ninja and you have one target and you know they got to poop sometime, why not do that? It works. <laughs> also makes me think of the anime ghost stories where there is a ghost hiding in the toilet. I've already talked about that on this stream, though. 180,400, not quite enough for first place. Is that a that solid second? second? No. It is second. Cool. Yeah, ghost stories. There was a there was a ghost that would hide in the toilet, and when people went to use it, the ghost would ask, "Do you want red paper, or blue paper?" And then they would have to choose, and the ghost would kill them based off of what color of paper they chose. I'm colorblind, kid. <laughs> Deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing is, if you chose another color didn't choose any at all, the ghost would still kill you, just in worse ways. Ah. Yeah. Ghost is a jerk. Well, it's a toilet ghost! Of course it's a jerk! Who haunts a toilet? Is there a toilet, Yokai? In ghost stories, there is? I mean, is there an actual toilet Yokai? I mean, there has to be. Yeah, there, is there a toilet absolutely yokai. has to okay. He wants to make you wash your hands after using the toilet. Are you serious? Is this a thing? <laughs> I, I like this yokai. No, do not choose yellow paper, Flatum Cat. That was not one of the choices, and you will die. Huh. Okay, so here we go. Hanako-san, or... Uh, Toire no Hanako-san is a Japanese urban legend about the spirit of a young girl named Hanako-san who haunts school toilets. Like many urban okay. legends, the details of the origins of the legend vary depending on the account. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So here is the legend and its variations. Hanako-san is the spirit of a young girl who haunts school toilets and can be described as a yokai or as a yurei. The details of her physical appearance vary across different sources, but she is commonly described as having a bobbed haircut 
and as wearing, wearing a red skirt or dress. The details of Hanako-san's origins also vary depending on the account. In some versions, she was a child who was murdered by a stranger or an abusive parent in a school toilet. In other versions, she was a girl who uh, basically uh, took her own life in a school toilet. Also a bad idea. In still other version, she was a child who lived during World War II and who was killed in an air raid while hiding in a school toilet during a game of hide and seek. To summon her, it is often said that individuals must enter a girl's toilet, usually on the third floor of a school, knock three times on the third stall, and ask if Hanako-san is present. If she is there, she will reply with some variation of, yes, I am. Depending on the story, the individual may then witness the appearance of a bloody or ghostly hand. The hand or Hanako-san herself may pull the individual into the toilet, which may lead to hell. Oh no. Or the individual Boy, may be eaten by a three-headed lizard who claims that the individual was invading Hanako's privacy. Fair enough. Fizz is so close to a PB, uh, but started this with five minutes left and is down to one. There we go, there's yeah. the PB. There we go, fantastic. Do we see 200? Vinbright is close to a PB, but I don't think in five seconds he's gonna score one here. Nope, just short of a PB. So Vinbright remains in third at this point, according to my chart. Oh my gosh, yeah, I... Oh my gosh, Thalfin, you are saying that you think that we've all experienced toilet hell? Yeah, I remember vomiting because of a toilet once. Oh no. Like, yeah, usually the toilet is there, like, to, to be a receptacle, not a producer, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I won't go further into details let's just say it was gross it was yeah very thank you bad. for not going into details uh 190,500 for the fizz that is first place very nice the fizz very nice uh zimmy just grabbed a pb but uh only by 100 points and then immediately mm -hmm. died. moved the screen around <laughs> it's all your fault Still blaming Tristan, even though you didn't make this game. Might as well be you. I, I will take some of the blame because I chose to run it, even knowing that could happen. But you know, it's, <laughs> isn't it good that we get to experience this? It's kind of funny. I'm having a lot of fun today. This is being a blast, even if this game is kind of a hot mess. I mean, at least it runs. For Vic 20, like, I don't really know how sophisticated the Vic 20 was. I'm, I'm gonna guess not very. You can do better than this. Uh, the, the high watermark for game quality is actually a fairly recent homebrew called Realms of Quest, if I recall correctly. Okay. Um, which has much greater graphical fidelity than this, but it's still fairly chunky. And that gotcha. is after how many decades of researching how to torture the processor to do better stuff? Enough. Uh, I want to play that series at some point, but yeah, it's, uh, you know. Recent. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm suddenly very tired. Chuck Norris I, will do that to you. The Chuck Norris. Well, yeah, honestly, if you can, like, knock people out without kicking them, that is the best kind of karate. <laughs> the pacifist karate. That's what that's what's happening to me right now. I just got punched in the face by sleep. Oh no. Yeah. Sandman just doing a roundhouse kick. Has there ever been a good RoboCop game? No. <laughs> Interesting question for a Chuck Norris game, but I would also say <laughs> mostly no. Mostly no. 
Has there ever been a good Chuck Norris game, though? I don't know. Maybe that beat him up for uh, uh, for iPhone would or BlackBerry, iPhone slash BlackBerry. That could be fun. So Cadence announced the official scoring for uh, RoboCop Four, um, and then switched Time Walker and Time Wanderer. So I'm not sure what's going on here now, but it looks <laughs> like Time Walker, Time Walker Walter, that Ghost, Time Wanderer, and J Hit. That is the order, and that is hilarious. See, it's not just me! It's not just me! Just don't put time in your name, okay? And have it sound like Walker Wanderer, okay? As soon as you do that, I'm done. I have no idea what's going on. Time Walker, Texas Ranger? Time Walkerer. Time Walkerer, yeah. yeah. Time Whisperer, oh, that would mess everything up. That would make <laughs> life so hard for me. Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna go ahead and forget that. Do, 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 do. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Uh, Zimmy is putting down a pretty solid PB at this point. Five minutes left and they're landing their own PB. Uh, but they've still got about 100k to go to be in the running for victory. Mm -hmm. Gonna be... Also, what is this, like, fighting area? It looks like there's a steel beam. Like, except it's made out of copper above Zimmy and Ven Bright. I, I, I know that each area that you go to is supposed to be a different place alongside the road per the story of the Atari version. Like, the Fizz You're is currently on a battlefield that has a lot of pistols. You're fighting under the world's largest recorder. <laughs> Gotta play some sick Mary Had a Little Lamb on that sucker. Yeah. Zimmy's doing really well this attempt. Actually, wait, 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 wait. No, the, the recorder song that everybody learns how to play is Green Sleeves. Probably. I don't recall... It's been a long time. Look, it was, I think it was fourth grade when I was a kid. Something like that, that we learned how to play the recorder, and uh, I bet you I could still play some mean tunes on that sucker. Oh yeah, and you get one of those like cheapo $2 injection molded recorders and <laughs> They terrible. all sound like trash. Uh-huh. But that's, but still it's like you have your own personal instrument that you can take with you wherever you want it sounds like trash but you don't care you're playing freaking green sleeves i personally wanted to learn how to play um the waterfall level theme from the young indiana jones chronicles but i was forbidden to do that by like an order of congress congress was like you aren't if Congress is stopping you from playing the recorder, I'm very concerned about your musical skills. Well, have you heard that song? No. It may be some of the worst music on the uh, NES that was, like, not bootleg. Well, maybe I have heard it, but I don't recall it. We're going to see a PB from Venbright. Venbright just sitting down a lot. You know what? An important part of Kung Fu is knowing when to sit. Solomary was looking good and then just walked into the grass and got generated and two minutes gone like that. Yeah, grass is the most deadly thing in this video game, okay? Grass will destroy you. Grass will destroy Chuck Norris, indeed. Maybe he's got, like, hay fever or something, you know? Severe grass allergies? allergies. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've got I've got allergies to grass. So we're getting to the point where our racers should be thinking about their final attempts. We're getting there. And um, a lot of your score at this point, if you've got the rhythm down, is going to come from the ninja murder party. And that's going to take time, you know? So I'm thinking about 10 minutes for a good attempt. Um, so after Fizz Basically and the right final go down, we're attempt, probably going to see yeah. our last attempt from them. I think so.
The spoon yeah, handle. It might not. The spoon handle. I sorry, I just saw my layout the phrase the spoon handle, and it turns out that's because it's someone's name. It's good name. Good name. I like spoons. Thank so you for the raid as well, Spin Cut. Come and join us. I am delusional at this point. So what we uh, what we have here, Venbright has hit a PB, but still has about mm, 12,000 to go before overtaking Fizz. And only a minute left in this attempt. Oh no. Yeah, yeah good to have people stopping by. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, no, look, it's not... It's not the salt and vinegar chips. Those are the things that are just keeping me awake for the rest of this match, okay? This is the reason I'm still alive and not like a Dracula or something. All right, Vinbright has overtaken to Salamari. Um, about 9,000 left to go to take first in 27 oh, Simi, seconds. Simi, I don't know. Zimmy, it's it's fine. Just do whatever you need. I'll I'll move. Okay. I missed uh, Zimmy's score out of that. I think I. I think he resets for his final attempt, but it was in like the 120 thousands. Like not terrible. No. Definitely is fine to want a decent final attempt though. I, I think that, especially if you learned something from your previous attempt, here's the deal. You know, with Cusa Grande, uh, especially when you have something that's like a, a, a high score attempt, uh, and that you get to play the game multiple times and completely mess up my cropping, uh, Honestly, all you need is one good attempt, and if you learn something, uh, even though your progress can be taken away by resetting, uh, your knowledge never goes away. So learning something new in a crappy attempt is still worth it. Getting that knowledge and keeping it. So what we're seeing here is probably the final attempt for everyone. I don't even think Fizz has time for another attempt. Mm -hmm. uh, so where things sit right now is whatever Fizz gets here is, is his uh, high water mark. Zimmy is in fourth with somewhere around 125,000, definitely fourth place. Vinbright is at 182, and Sarmari is at 180. Okay. No, so in this Zimmy. final push, okay, it's fine. That's six. fine. Fine. In this final push, we need to see if anyone's going to beat 193,600. Um, I don't know if anyone has time for that. We'll see. Maybe. I think Fizz is pretty much done, but he's going to try again. I would definitely uh, still try, you know. Go absolutely. until time is up. You never know if suddenly you're going to figure something out. Yeah, exactly. Like, there is a chance. Might as well go for it. Um, I think the big potential here is going to be Venbright, who has six minutes left at 30,000. Um, yeah, this is going to be their last attempt on this. They will probably not be able to finish the attempt, because like I said, you get a minute at every checkpoint added to your timer, but they might be able to make 193k if they motor. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. I've never made that in an hour. Maybe one day. One day I can be like, hmm, I made 193k. Now, Yusul Murray is a little bit further in at 66k. Um, four minutes left. They'll finish this attempt in all likelihood. If they can make the, the Fizz 193 is a question. But there's a chance for either one of them on the bottom to overtake first. They just gotta move it. This has actually boogie. been really exciting. I haven't had to dip into my Chuck Norris fact. Yeah, we have had a lot, uh, a lot of progress from the players, you know, a lot of learning, a lot of good score attempts. And honestly, I already know everything I need to know about Chuck Norris, so fine. Ben Bright at over 100,000. Very nice, Ben Bright. Always good to see that. Oh my gosh. I, I do think there's enough time. I, I think there's enough time for Vembrite to get a high score. I mean, five minutes left. It's doable. For other players, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, the Fizz is still the one with the current best, right? Yes, 193.6. I think Venbright is really the only one who has a realistic chance at this point to uh, pass the Fizz. 
But it is a chance. It's realistic. I think it could be done. This three enemy fight is messing with him, though. Now, when Yasara Murray finishes this fight and gets to the end of this checkpoint, they will be at over 100,000. They have a chance, too. I think it's less of a chance, though. Okay. By the way, if Venbright did manage to move into first, that would put Venbright at 30 points, guaranteeing a spot in the bracket. The Fizz, if the Fizz takes first, he will also be moving straight on into the bracket. No tiebreaker needed oh, for those two. So I, I think, you know, between those two, uh, if one of them takes first, they will be in the bracket. Everybody else gone. Everybody else out of the tournament. It's intense. Okay, Vendrate is at 163,000 having reached the final area. They need exactly 30,000 points in the ninja party in the next three and a half minutes. That is a tall ask, but it's doable. It definitely is. I do wonder, though, it's... Uh, can you go back to previous areas and refight some of the enemies that you beat? Or possibly even just get knocked down uh, after killing like two out of three enemies and go back and fight it? Because if so, what if you could just grind most of your points in a single fight? So the main thing about that, uh, and why I was comfortable doing score attack, is that the score you get for progress through checkpoints eclipses enemy punching score so much okay. that it's not worth doing that. And then the enemies here in Ninja Party Land give a whole lot more than enemies anywhere else. Gotcha. Oh my so gosh. Two and a half minutes play, left. The best play is just to go as forward as fast as you can until the final boss fight and then yeah. just try to live here as long as you can. Okay, that makes sense. There's still technically enough time, but Vembrite, oh, you gotta, you gotta stop getting stunned. It's just so hard. These ninjas are so hard. Well, some of them are immune to specific attacks, so, like, it makes sense. If Vimbrite were permitted to finish this attempt out, I think they would get it, but they have two and a half minutes more game time than they have match time. Yeah. And unless otherwise stated before the match, we do keep things specifically to the hour. We do not yeah, change I... any of the rules. I didn't make any provision for that because I didn't figure it would come down to the final attempt like this. <laughs> but the Fizz is there as well with 169,000 points. Uh, I don't... I don't think either of them will get a new... Yusolomary is a, right a new behind him, right? It. Oh my gosh, everybody and, here. Yusolomary... Yusolomary's game time and the time remaining in the match are basically even. So... He's got just as much of a chance here as Venbright does. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. It's This is strangely ridiculous. I still don't think anybody is going to get back up past 190,000, though. No, it doesn't look like it, but we still got a minute. You don't? Yeah, it's not over till it's over, you know? Uh, Isalamiri getting a few very fast, not necessarily lucky, skilled hits getting the score to go a little bit higher the fizz also catching up to his personal best wow thirty seconds left here we go we're moving to the end and yeah the fizz is almost past everybody else score wise uh, just in this attempt alone Yep, and there we go, 200 behind E. Salamiri. I would say that the Fizz has definitely learned the most for how to play this game well and consistently. And there we go, Salamiri, we are done. 400 point PB, it's not enough to change rankings. Not quite and enough. Venbright didn't quite make it either, so the Fizz takes it. The Fizz is our victor today. Congratulations! Let me go ahead and message Fizz. Uh, join General Voice if you want, because I would love to talk to Fizz about this experience. Yeah, for sure, the Fizz takes 
the victory, Ven Bright second, uh, Issa Lamiri third, and Zim comes in fourth. Yeah, Zim definitely struggled the most, but this puts the Fizz into the bracket. Of course, uh, I do want to put a small little asterisk here. Whenever going and reviewing, of course, things can change, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Hello, the Fizz. Welcome and congratulations. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> that was an experience, let me tell you. Okay, uh, talk to me about that. What do you mean an experience? Well, so I grew up on the Commodore 64, so this yeah. felt like home. This this felt like coming home to me. Okay. And and um, the the hitboxes were just as janky as I remember. The inputs are just as bad as I remember, but it's just as charming as I remember. So, you know, it's good. I mean, Vic 2064, kind of the same. It felt the same. But yeah. Yeah, um, uh, I, I mean, I do believe this came out on the Commodore 64. It was definitely on Atari consoles. We had a version of this earlier in uh, Cusa Grande, and it, it definitely is uh, pretty, uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't necessarily say intense, uh, but it gets very difficult at the end, like being able to deal any damage to the enemies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the last two screens were real bad. The uh, one with the three enemies, uh, yep. thankfully vulnerable to anything, but three enemies. And then the... Uh, the ones that go invisible, but it was uh, it was good. I figured it out fairly early. I was happy. Um, I I figured good. out like the punch and kick hitboxes. So I was like, oh yeah, yeah, no, I got this. So yeah, I'm, the hitboxes are feel a little bit off, but figuring that out early is definitely worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It was a it was a pleasure. This is the farthest I've ever made it in the Kuso, so I'm super excited. I thought I was out today. I saw the game. I thought I was out. So thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Sorry, I, I know that the uh, Cadis is talking about it, uh, uh, about things in the Discord, and I do believe you managed to re reach a high score of 193,600 points. Uh, 190, on... Yeah, 193,600. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I, I do think that that is a decent score. I was thinking we might have beaten 200,000 at some point and possibly on your last attempt with the amount of time that you had left. You could have done that. I feel like uh, it would have ended up working out just fine. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, the Fizz, seriously, I'm glad to see that you're heading on into the bracket. I do have to ask, is there anything that you'd like to plug or let people know about? So I don't I, I don't really stream. So uh, just check out, I mean, Listen, all the all the shows that Burrow Sanchez puts out are amazing. So just just keep watching him. That's fine. <laughs> <Thanks. I don't... laughs> uh, yeah, you can still follow, though, uh, if you would like everybody watching. Just don't necessarily expect the stream to pop up too much. But honestly, you know, a lot of this is about community building, you know, finding friends, finding people who have similar interests. And it's it's fun. I'm really glad that you joined this year and that, you know, you're doing this well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it really was interesting that it worked out that I had to get first because I got second every other round. Uh, it's interesting that the points worked out that I had to get first in order to get in. I kind of like that system, so uh, props to whoever set it up. Yay, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why I said it that way. I'm just well, gonna be thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so everybody, as a reminder, we have, or er, Dead and I will be playing in Arcade Pit, I believe, at April. PM Eastern today. So twitch.tv slash smite if you want. Uh, he's not currently live, but he will be live later. If you want to come watch us, I would love to have you there. Other than that, uh, Tuesday night, we have a mystery tournament special for Don't Make Us Bored. Be sure you come and tune in here. And I will see you about streams during the week otherwise. Thank you so much. Let's go and raid Mystery Fun House because they are here and we had a good quote from Robocop 4 and I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh yeah, right quick before uh, we go. Um... <clears throat> Time waits for no man, unless that man is Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris oh once roundhouse kicked someone so hard that his foot broke the oh, speed of light. God. 
If you ask Chuck Norris what time it is, he says two seconds till. If you ask two seconds till what, he roundhouse kicks you in the face. Uh, everybody, I'm cutting stream as quickly as I can. Uh, go ahead. Thank you for your cooperation. Shut up, Tristan. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye, Fizz. Bye-bye. Thanks again. Bye, Tristan. Bye. <laughs>